All right, so this is my first MacBook upgrade in six years. Before this, I was using a 2019 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro. And for most of that time, I tried to convince myself it was still good enough. I told myself the lag was normal, the fan noise was normal, the heat was normal, and the crashes were just unlucky. They weren't. This upgrade didn't happen because I wanted something new. It happened because my old MacBook Pro literally stopped being able to do my job. One client project pushed everything over the edge. Final Cut kept crashing, timelines lagged uncontrollably, and the exports failed more than once. So what ended up happening was I missed the deadline, I lost a significant amount of money, all because my old machine couldn't keep up with my workflow anymore. When your computer becomes the reason you fail a client, that's when things need to change. So this is my long term review of the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M4 Max chipset, bought refurbished after months of real world use. And coming from Intel, this upgrade genuinely felt like I was going to the moon. So what was the reason I finally decided to upgrade? The biggest issue with the Intel Mac wasn't just the performance, it was trust. Every editing session felt like a gamble. Would the fan spin up, would the timeline stutter, would the app crash after 45 minutes of work, and the battery life made things even worse. I love to work a lot in cafes, and if you've ever used an Intel MacBook Pro in a cafe, you know the anxiety. You're constantly checking on the battery percentage, scouting for outlets, rearranging tables or mentally rationing tasks so you don't die at 3%. At some point, portable stops meaning portable. I wanted a machine I could rely on, not babysit. Something powerful enough to handle my workflow and flexible enough to last another five to six years. That's what finally pushed me to upgrade. So what Apple Silicon gives you isn't just faster renders or smoother playback. It gives you confidence. You stop working defensively. You stop planning around failure. You just work. And once you experience that, it's impossible to unlearn. So why did I decide to go with a 14 inch instead of a 16 inch? I can't came from a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So downsizing felt risky at first, but this time around for me portability mattered more than screen size. Most of my heavy editing happens on an external display at home, so losing some screen real estate wasn't a deal breaker. And surprisingly I adjusted to the 14 inch size a lot faster than I expected. It slips into my bag more easily and it's much more comfortable to use in casual settings. On airplanes, on the couch, or just moving around the house, the smaller size makes the MacBook feel far less cumbersome. I don't miss the 16 inch screen size at all. Now right out of the box, a few things stood out immediately. The display looked great, the keyboard felt fantastic, and the battery life honestly shocked me at first. But what matters more than those initial impressions is how this thing holds up months later. And the really impressive part is nothing really faded. There wasn't a honeymoon phase that wore off. If anything, the contrast between this machine and my old Intel MacBook Pro became more obvious the longer I used it. Even the black color choice I feel like aged pretty well. I went with the black instead of silver, and over time I actually prefer it even more. It looks cleaner, it's more professional, and it fits the this is a serious work machine vibe. Performance in real workloads. This is where the M4 Max really separates itself. My daily workflow includes Final Cut Pro, color grading, photo editing, and an absurd number of browser tabs running at once. Final Cut Photoshop, Lightroom, Chrome, Firefox, all open together. And compared to Intel, everything feels instant. Rendering timelines is faster, skimming through footage is smoother, scrubbing through large projects no longer stutters, exports that used to take forever now just quietly finish in the background. There's no moment in these past few months where I felt like I hit the ceiling. Now I went with 36 gigabytes of memory and I never once hit the limit. This system never feels constrained. Even when multitasking heavily, nothing slows down or behaves unpredictably. That's the biggest difference. It's not just speed, it's consistency. So here's the thing, I trust Apple with a lot of things, but my privacy, not completely. So here's where Moonlock comes in. Now they are the sponsor of today's video and it's because I believe that they're legit. It's a Mac first cybersecurity app that quietly protects your system from the moment you install it. Unlike most antivirus tools that slow you down, Moonlock works in the background 24 seven, scanning every file, blocking threats instantly and isolating anything that seems suspicious in quarantine. It also comes with a VPN for secure browsing and a network inspector that literally shows you which countries your data connects to. Something that I've never seen this cleanly visualized on a Mac. Plus, the built-in security advisor teaches simple habits like spotting sketchy links or using stronger passwords. It's kind of like having a mini cybersecurity coach baked into your laptop. The UI is lightweight, it's simple, and it actually looks really good, which is rare for a security app. 
you can actually try Moonlock for free for 7 days. And if you like it, I know you will because I do. Use my promo code RJLOCK for 10% off. Protect your Mac and your peace of mind with Moonlock. If you've ever lived with an Intel MacBook Pro, this part hits really hard. My old machine would heat up and blast fans for almost anything. Sometimes it felt like opening a single browser tab was enough to trigger it. With the M4 Max MacBook Pro, the difference is massive. Under heavy load, it does get a little bit warm, but that's to be expected. But in normal use, I don't hear the fans at all. Even during editing sessions, it stays quiet enough that it fades into the background. For the first time, I can comfortably edit with the MacBook Pro on my lap without feeling like I'm sitting on a space heater. That alone feels generational. Now, the battery life on this thing is the quiet hero. I get roughly around 6 hours of real world use depending on the day. And while that number might not sound groundbreaking on paper, the experience is completely different from Intel because that 6 hours is reliable. I can leave my charger at home without thinking twice. I don't dim the screen just in case. I don't plan my day around outlets anymore. That sense of freedom changes how you work. Cafes feel usable again. Travel feels easier. I can actually focus on tasks instead of managing battery anxiety. Once you experience that level of confidence, it's impossible to go back. Now for the display and the media experience. This display is excellent, but what's really interesting is how quickly it becomes normal. ProMotion is there, but I don't actively notice it. It just quietly makes everything feel smooth. Mini LED blooming has been a complete non-issue for me. I mainly work in SDR and for that case, this display is more than enough. Watching YouTube, Netflix, or even reviewing footage feels noticeably nicer than my old MacBook Pro. And the speakers also deserve some credit. For a laptop, they genuinely sound really good with solid volume and clarity. In fact, it's so good that I don't even have speakers on my desk. I just rely on the internal speakers of the MacBook Pro. And I genuinely enjoy typing on this keyboard. It's responsive, comfortable, and consistent, especially during long script writing and editing sessions. The trackpad is still the best in class, but at this point, that's to be expected from Apple. But what really stands out over time is the build quality. The MacBook Pro feels solid and premium in a way that inspires confidence. Nothing flexes, nothing creaks. It feels like a machine that was designed to be used hard for years. I mostly use the USB-C ports for external storage, and that setup has been really smooth. I personally don't use MagSafe that much. It hasn't saved me yet, but I really do appreciate having it as an option. Unfortunately, dongles are still a part of my life, mainly because the SD card slot here doesn't support the cards used by my Sony ZV-E1. So while things are better than before, dongles aren't fully gone yet. So that's fine though, it's been completely manageable. I want to spend a little bit more time talking about the refurbished decision because I think it's one of the most underrated ways to buy a Mac, especially for someone who keeps a laptop for a long time like I do. When you buy a MacBook Pro with the intention of using it for 5 or 6 years, the value equation changes. You're not chasing the latest model every year. You're buying a tool that needs to hold up over time. And in that context, saved money up front matters just as much as peak performance. Going refurbished allowed me to get the exact specs I wanted without stretching my budget unnecessarily. And that mattered because I'd rather overspec once than constantly feel like I'm on the edge of my machine's limits. The funny thing is, the refurbished experience felt identical to buying a brand new Mac. The MacBook arrived feeling and looking brand new. No visible wear, no signs of previous use, the same premium unboxing experience, the same performance, the same confidence. At no point did I feel like I had compromised and saving around $800 isn't a small difference. That's money that could go towards storage, software, accessories, or literally anything else in your setup. For professionals buying tools they plan to rely on for years, refurbished isn't a downgrade. It's a smarter allocation of your budget. After this experience, I genuinely have no hesitation recommending Apple refurbished to anyone, especially if you know the specs that you want and you plan on keeping your machine long term. So after switching to silicon, Intel feels completely obsolete. I haven't even touched my old Intel MacBook Pro since upgrading. Apple Silicon operates on a different level entirely, not just in performance, but in efficiency, thermals, and reliability. This feels like Apple has reached a mature, no compromise phase with their laptops. Everything works the way you expect it to all the time. So who is this Mac actually for? This MacBook Pro is for creatives and professionals who genuinely need power. Video editors, photographers, and anyone working in demanding workflows will immediately feel the benefit. But if you don't need this level of performance, you don't need this machine. And if you're already on an M1 or M2 Pro or Max, there's no real urgency to upgrade. Apple's M lineup is going to age really well. So here are my final thoughts. 
I keep my laptops for a long time and I'm fully confident that this MacBook Pro can last me another five or six years. After six years on Intel, this upgrade truly felt like going to the moon. Not because it's flashy or new, but because it finally lets me focus on my work instead of fighting my computer. And that's what makes it worth it. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. If you guys have any questions about buying a refurbished MacBook Pro, let me know down in the comments. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to flex with your tech. This MacBook Pro is gonna make me a lot of money.